Dr. Elche. I would like to to thank every everyone who came, the participants of the conference, my friends who I see often, Fritz Neumeyer and Silvia Malkovati, and of course Liliana Blagovic who invited me to speak. Let me, if I may be so bold, point to a potential terminological um, ambivalence and complication in the opposing of realism or new realism with, for example, postmodernism. Following that, I will give a justification and the reason for the revival of the syntagma new realism. Recently, one philosopher, Mario De Caro, even spoke of an epoca del neorealismo. When I say that the emphasis on realism is brought back, I do not at all have in mind the very important thematization of one other philosopher, Hilary Putnam, such as metaphysical realism, internal and common sense realism, capital and lower case R realism, etc. But rather I'm thinking of various manifestos and calls to realism main, made in this and the previous century. The reason this confrontation of realism, of new realism, and postmodernism could be entirely trivial is that the origin and use of these terms is not limited to a style or indeed to philosophy. In an interview 20 years ago, Patnam shows how difficult it is to differentiate continental French or postmodern philosophy and then attributes them to any individual philosopher. I do not think the same problem presents itself when Derrida or Foucault say that they have nothing to do with the postmodern, as when the architect, for example, Venturi, says so. The, the postmodern is first of all an architectural matter, which is the reason that on the ashes of postmodernism comes not a new realism, but just the opposite, for example, Radical postmodernism. Radical postmodernism is a term coined by Charles Jenks and the theme of one of the latest issues of architectural design. In articles signed by Jenks, Colas, the Fed, Collaborative, and others, postmodernism is defined as an incomplete project, and two facts were given as essential. No architect or building is completely RPM, radical postmodernism. Still, radical postmodernism could be similar to concretivism, another favorite word of contemporary theorists of architecture, and then paradoxically to a kind of realism that we are talking about here today. How then shall we justify this short syntagma neo or new realism and how shall we overcome the various problems that realism prior to this our own realism faced is real realism a tendency or a school does realism exist if and only if one realist recognizes another what is the connection between old and new realism how should the old be combined with the new and is it the case that new realism is neither old wine in new bottle, nor wholly new? In light of this or some other kind of hesitation, which we will sooner or later resolve among us, new realism could be in permanent confrontation with a higher form of textualism, a hysteric or overbearing textualism, or with a combination of formalism and textualism. Let me specify that by textualism I do not at all mean the various bastardizations of the simplified sentence from Derrida about text, nor the conjoining of literature and philosophy which ought to remain opposed, nor the hysterical treatment of the text or document that should be immediately immediately stopped. Since I have no true answer to whether new realism is in perpetual resistance 
or whether the real is exclusively that which is indestructible and returning, always returning in the end. For example, Lyotard uses the syntagma l'extrême réel, and Roland Barthes, if you will recall his famous text, Reality Effect, talks about concrete reality. Concrete is always a weapon against meaning. That was the, the sentence uh, phrase of Roland Barthes. Concrete is always a weapon against meaning. Or whether the real is that which remains after everything else has completely burned down, it seems that now would be quite simple to bring up the program and first platform of six realists written a hundred years ago and their 1912 book, The New Realism. The article was published July 21, uh, 1910 in the Journal of Philosophy. The book came out in 1912 in New York authored by several philosophers, six philosophers. This program or manifesto could be quite useful to architects. So what is new realism? The six, six philosophers, insist on a few aspects. Although necessarily polemical in tone, new realism must be a complete philosophy or must at least show promise of completeness. The new realism is not an accident, nor a tour de force, nor an isolated and curious speculative eruption. New realism implies, it's a quotation, the separation of philosophical research from the study of the history of philosophy. And realism is a constructive philosophy and a rejection of all mystical philosophies. These last two characteristics, that realism is constructive, and not deconstructive, not an easy task, given that Derrida often said that deconstruction is not negative but affirming, as well as that realism destroys all mysticism, these two aspects can be drawn from the subtitle of the new realism, that manifesto, the new realism, cooperative studies in philosophy. Cooperative studies in philosophy. And I quote, this dawning spirit of fellowship says the six at the beginning of the book, accompanied by desire for a better understanding and a more effective cooperation, has prompted the present undertaking. The real is only that which is operative or can become operative, that is, which belongs to all. That means cooperative. Meaning the idea that is possible to work together and fix the text or architectural object, object, the idea that is possible to think and discuss together, construct project, projects together, this idea implies that the real or realization, realizato is German word, is that which is divisible, communal and can be institutionalized under the name il nuovo realismo or the new realism. Mysticism, dreams, fantasies, as well as obtuseness or violence, don't forget that utopia is not mystic dream, dreams or fantasy, cannot last, not withstand the constant problem and the process of institutionalization. In conclusion, allow me to insist that the nuovo realismo is not simply some Italian thing or Italian problem, this is nonsense, but rather the condition and key of a new European thought. Thank you.